There's this video of Fat Joe talking about the Trump shoes, right? That's really kind of doing my nothing. I'm really doing my nothing because I absolutely hate these Trump shoes. I think they're absolutely disgusting. I think they're awful. But for some reason, sneakerheads, especially in America, have like started to like cap and hype beats for this shoe. They're acting as if they're like really cool because they're limited edition, because they're gold, because they're expensive. I'm like, bro, forget Trump and his views on him as a person. Just as a shoe, it's fucking ugly. It doesn't even look good. It's kind of stuck between looking like a Jordan, looking like a blazer. It's got weird paneling on it. The finishing and the quality of it is all over the place. They're terrible. And I also don't get the association with Trump wearing high tops because they're gold. I, I don't know. It's all over the place. It's a fucking mess. I think they look awful, personally, my own personal opinion. But for some reason, sneakerheads in the US have kind of turned them into like a thing. Oh, yeah, you need to get these. Uh, but I guess because they're just going for loads of money on eBay, right? They're going for like five grand, whatever they're going for on there. Because people are going to collect them because they're quite unquote limited edition. Personally, for me, I feel like this represents everything that's wrong with the sneaker industry. With people just being obsessed with buying stuff because it's limited edition. Like, if it's limited edition, it automatically means it's better than anything else that you can purchase. And I personally don't agree with that. I think sneaker culture or being a sneaker head isn't just about buying something that's limited. It's about being into shoes, whether they're limited or not limited. If anything, being into being into sneakers is actually trying to discover shoes that aren't cool and making them cool. That's why I remember when I got into it for, you kind of got into it to kind of do your own little thing with shoes, right? You bought a pair of shoes, you kind of freaked them in your own way, you made them kind of do their thing, and then people kind of jumped on it. I think that's the actual way to go about things. I think the way these guys go about things and try to make, you know, and try to just jump on the bandwagon of shoes that are already hype is absolutely shit. And I fucking hate it. So let's continue this. So this is Fat Joe talking about the Trump shoes. Um, I think he, you know, again, is basically saying the complete opposite of what I would say when it comes to sneak being a sneakerhead. And I think if anything, he represents some of the things I fucking hate about being a sneakerhead where people are just buying shoes for the sake of them being limited. So let's hear from Fat Joe and hear his reasons behind hyping up these shitty, shitty, awful Trump sneakers. Because I think they're absolutely garbage. But hear Fat Joe talk about them, right? I think they're terrible. But let's hear what Fat Joe has to say. Do you really know what Basquiat was into? Do you know what Anthony War or Andy Warhol was into? Anthony Warhol. Any of these artists that you was into, you love the art. So you get it. I guess they... But you, that's the thing, though. You don't love the art. You're, you're not getting it because you love the art. You're getting it because they're limited. That's the thing that he's not he's missing. You're not buying the Trump shoes because you love them. You're buying them because people hate Trump. You want to kind of be like, you know, what's that thing called? You want to be a contrarian. You know, they're going for a lot of money. They look fucking good. That's why you're buying them. You're not actually buying them because you like them. No one's buying these shoes because they like them. I refuse to believe that. They don't buy them because they like them. They buy them because they're being hypebeast. Separate art from the person. Now, me as a sneaker collector, I had to get my hand on the trunks. No, you don't have. That's the thing. You don't have to get anything. That's the thing that I despise about sneakerheads nowadays. They buy everything. Jordan Brand puts out a release calendar of ma mainly retros. A Jordan 1, a Jordan 2, a Jordan 3, a Jordan 4, a 5, a 6, a 7. In the same fucking shape, same materials, different colorways. Who cares? It's boring. You're not demanding anything more from your brands and these sportswear companies. So it's no surprise they, they overcharge you on these fucking Jordans, give you different colorways every year and trick you into believing that, oh, this is limited edition. Bruh, maybe improve the shape. Maybe improve the materials. Maybe give me different designs. Maybe give me a story. Maybe do something special to make me want to fork out 200 plus dollars on these fucking shoes. Don't just keep selling me the same retro and telling me it's fucking different. It's like pissing in someone's mouth and telling them it's fucking orange juice. I fucking hate it. Doesn't matter. Show us the trunks, please. Y'all trying to cloud change it. Yeah. Y'all give me a trunk. Give me, give me the trunk, man. Give me the trunk, man. <laughs> They think I'm fronting. But listen, I have thousands and thousands and thousands of pair of sneakers. When everybody flipped on Kanye, I went and bought the two most exclusive Kanye's ever. First of all, they got them. Congratulations. Like, again, being a sneakerhead isn't owning a thousand sneakers. Being a sneakerhead is being into the stuff that you're into and just buying it. It doesn't matter if you've got one, if you've got ten, if you've got a thousand. It's not really a competition about how many. Personally, I think this is more of an American thing anyway. I'm not going to lie. I think American sneakerheads are just obsessed with hype. I think European ones are probably more obsessed with like 
you know, vintage and trying to unearth gems and shit. But I just think in general, that attitude is definitely permeating its way into Europe too. I'm seeing a lot more people just being flat out hype beasts. And the thing that I hate about it is that even though I used to work for hype beasts back in the day, right, when it first started, I was one of the first flipping bloggers and editors on there. I hated the term hype beast. It's a derogatory term. Obviously, they've kind of embraced it and twisted it. But being a hype beast is a derogatory term. It's meant to describe people who have no brain, who are sheep. I mean, who are brainless, who let the kind of brand tell them what to buy based on how limited it is, based on the crazy materials, based on the lights, based on the colors. That's actually the term of it. It's not meant to be something that you, it's not a term of endearment. You're not meant to kind of use it as a badge of honor that you're a hype beast. If anything, being a hype beast is the same like, you know, purpose is the same as like admitting that you copy out somebody dresses and stuff. That's gross. As a grown man, like wearing something that somebody else wears from head to toe because you don't have any mind of your own. Like, come on, bro. No, no, I ain't doing all that. Just give me one of the sneakers. I'm not. Just show him the box first, what it says. Look at the, even the box. Look at even the box. Look at the box. Look at even the box. The box looks like, a, you know, the box that you'd get a fucking Lego from or something like, or or like a or like a set of china or something. It's horrible. The box isn't even luxurious. The shoes might look somewhat luxurious. Look at the box. Look how terrible. Look at the different fonts. Look at the colors. Look at the finish of the box. It looks terrible. That's a special shoe in your, your regard. It doesn't even come like in a wooden box or like something metal or like a fake a fake gold bullion. That would be pretty cool, right? Imagine the if the shoes were encased in a box that looked like a gold bullion and when you opened it up, it kind of, you know, had LEDs on the inside. Okay, maybe that's a bit different. But you just give me this black cardboard box that's trumpet like, come on, man. You got to do better. Friends and family, there's only 50 of these. Only, only, get... only 50, allegedly. Come on, bro. Do you believe that, really? You think they only make 50 pairs of those fucking gaudy, horrible sneakers? Why only 50? Were the, were the uppers made out of fucking um, fragments of fucking gold or something? I don't believe that. Come on. Get my hands on them. Once again, on I'm not a Trumper. I dislike Trump. I'm not voting for him. Not now, not never. But I'm a sneaker collector into the art, so I had to find these. You know what? It's actually better if you buy them because you're a Trumper. Buying these shoes because you like Trump actually makes more sense than buying them because you think they look nice. Because they don't look nice. You can't tell me these shoes look nice. They're fucking ugly. But if you're an actual Trumper, if you're a MAGA person, cool, buy them. It's, it's going to join your collection of hats. That actually makes more sense. If you actually like Trump like that, that makes more sense. Like you buy all his memorabilia. You buy his fucking hats. You buy his hoodies. You buy his fucking mugs. Cool. More power to you. But trying to kid yourself into believing that you bought these shoes because they're good looking is fucking insane. And, and is one of the main reasons why modern day sneaker culture or being a sneakerhead is so lame now because people don't have a brain of their own and they have horrible taste, horrendous taste, especially guys like Joe, um, what you call it? Um, what you call it? What's his name? Fat Joe. The guys with all the money in the world, all the access, they have the worst taste. Have you seen fucking DJ Khaled's collection of shoes? You seen how horrible it is because you have too much access, too much money. You don't really have any discernible taste. There's nothing you can't buy. So you buy it all. As long as it's gaudy and horrible looking, covered in python and leather and cowhide and camo, whatever it may be, and splattered in fucking rainbow colors. Oh, it's only two are made. You fucking buy them. It's fucking awful. It reminds me of the time when I used to work in Selfridges and shit. And they'd always say, whenever Middle Eastern, you know, um, rich Middle Eastern people were coming to Selfridges, they would always say sometimes, oh, if there's a bag in the back that hasn't sold, bring it out in this plastic wrapping and lie to the person and say, oh, this is the last one ever made. They don't make them usually this material, but usually it's because it's the one that hasn't sold. It would be like a bag in like an avocado green, a burnt orange or something. And you bring it out and you're like, oh yeah, this, this bag is limited. And they'll buy it just because you said it's limited. That was what people would do back in the day. And so I don't know if it's a, if it's a tactic nowadays, but when he's working suffrages, that was a practice. And I feel like these guys are the same Muppets that do the same thing. Someone tells them, hey, this is only 10 of these made. No evidence, no nothing. Just sell it to you and you're fucking buying it. I hate it. Now the mayor's going to call me. Everybody's going to call me. And say, you wilding out, Joe. Why you got the trunk? Look, mayor's the first one. Joe, you... They're horrible. I'm a sneaker collector. They're shit. they're shit. I don't know what none of these guys did. I collect sneakers. The rarer, the better. Okay, so at least he's admitting it. Let's go back there. So at least he's admitting it. I collect sneakers. The rarer, the better.
That's not true. Just because your shoe is limited edition, it doesn't mean it's good. I'm sorry. There's many limited edition shoes that have come out that are terrible. Case in point, the Tiffany Air Force Ones. Horrendous collaboration. Waste of time. That Tiffany Air Force One was the direct um, representation or example of why nepotism is bad. Because the founder of fucking LV, LVMH, his son is the you know is the CEO of fucking um, Tiffany's, right? Not because of their skill, not because of their talent or anything, just because they're you know the son of this guy. They get to fucking design these Air Force Ones, and they probably was one of the worst ones I've seen in my life. Like, especially when you think about the collaboration, Tiffany, Air Force, Nike. You think of all the history behind diamonds. You think of the history of the Air Force Ones and what they represent to fucking street culture and the fact that they looked at it as a quasi luxury shoe. You can imagine so many interesting possibilities of what that Tiffany Air Force One would look like. Then it eventually comes out, and it's just a black Air Force One with a Tiffany swoosh. You're like, what the fuck is this? This is fucking horrible. So that goes to show you that sometimes limited edition shoes, just because they're limited edition, don't make them good. So he's talking out of his ass. No, I didn't pay for these sneakers. If you didn't pay for them, can you actually call yourself a collector then? Can you talk with any kind of bass in your voice if you don't pay for anything? So you get everything given to you for free. You're saying you, you're, you're being proud that it's like a limited edition shoe, but you didn't pay for it. And you have no evidence that it's limited edition anyway. They're just saying it is. Sorry, I didn't pay for these sneakers. They knew I had to have them because I'm the biggest in the game. Anyway, you get a gist. I fucking hate them. I think they look garbage. I don't understand the hype. I really don't. Um, but again, it goes to show that modern day sneaker culture is nothing but a hype beast fucking festival anyway. It's nothing but a hype beast festival anyway. It is what it is.